Hello everybody and welcome to the stone house. I've been dreading making this video just because I felt like it was going to be difficult. But now that I'm looking at these before and where we are right now at pictures, I'm excited to do this video. I'm going to try my best to show a little bit of every single episode that we have done over the last five years. It's, it's just mind boggling the amount of work that's been done in five years. But enough talking, let's get right to the video here. I'm excited to show you. In the very beginning, we had no plan whatsoever of what we were gonna do. Super exciting. We have shiplap in the wall, not plaster and lath, at least in this wall. Pretty much just started ripping things apart and one thing led to another. Um, well, I guess you'll see. You'll see what's about to happen. I can say that Sarah and I both had no idea what we were about to get ourselves into. Now that we have the two lally columns up and the temporary braces down, we're going to try to clean up the old footers that we found and fill the holes back in and get rid of the dirt, uh, the extra dirt that we don't need in the basement. It's pretty big and it's good that they did something, but it wasn't quite good enough for Lucas. <laughs> It was right about now where I really started seriously doubting my actions and my thoughts and, and how the heck I got to where I was and if I was honestly going to be able to put the house back together.
Important thing to note here is that we did raise the ceiling upstairs from six foot six to eight foot. Well, you've already watched over a year's worth of renovation, and it was our second year is when we noticed that this house basically was impossible to heat. It was costing us $700 a month in fuel oil, so we decided to bite the bullet and install a whole new boiler system, which is, uh, the new one is propane, and after spray foam insulation and everything that we've done we are now spending less than $200 a month to heat the house. It was right about here where I really started to find a passion for the salvaged material that I was finding. And I knew I had to do something with it. I couldn't just throw it away. I had to use it. Taking your time during a renovation made it very simple for me to hang on to materials and wait for the perfect placement to where I could showcase that material in a whole new way. But of course, anytime you're using salvaged material, you can expect to take five times longer to do anything. One of the biggest benefits of using salvaged material is the amount of money that you save. These bleachers here that I put down for flooring upstairs only cost us $600. And I don't think that you could find anything comparable that wouldn't cost you thousands. And the fact that when the floor is done, as you will see in this video, you get a look that is unlike anything else. It's a perfectly strong, flat floor, but it looks like it's been there for a long time. One, and this will be bedroom two. 
Sarah is measuring them. Eleven seven. That's it. Do you guys have anything to say? Yeah. What would you like to say? Oh, um, thanks for being a subscriber. Thanks for being a subscriber. Thanks for being a subscriber. Bye. <laughs> After putting down the floor, and pegging most of the floor, and framing a bulk of the house, I really needed to switch it up. I really needed to do something different. And at the same time, the basement started taking on a little bit of water, so I decided, hey, why not? Let's, uh, let's dig a French drain by hand. After successfully finishing the French drain, I decided to go back inside and, and face off on one of the most difficult tasks, at least the one that scared me the most, was wiring the house. I did get some help with it, of course, but it was still a very intimidating task. And then, finally, after multiple years of demo and building and wiring, I finally got to do something that was kind of finishing in a way. I got to use our old floorboards to put up this amazing one-of-a-kind ceiling at the top of the stairs. This is my love for you. So shout from the city gates. He heaven bless his day That all the elders say That this love is worth the wait Let go and hear the sound Pull all the bears down I'll cherish the one I found If this is my love I could show this whole renovation and never show a mistake, but what fun would that be? When I poured some floor leveler upstairs, it cured poorly, and it caused me to do some stuff I didn't want to do. I'm not going, baby. I just don't fit right. And when I do, I feel something wrong. Uh. 
I feel something wrong Like an aging star Who lost the fire Sing a song too many times And it feels like a liar They can't sing from his heart Can't sing from his heart. So when I go out alone in this dark and lonely sea, will you reassure me and be the rock under my feet? When I lose my way and I circle on it, will you point my shoulder? So I can carry on Sometimes a gut decision An instinct or hunch Will drive me out to the edge But then I think too much I'm not sure In the way of the way. Since finishing the upstairs bathroom was so much fun and extremely satisfying, we decided to move on to the downstairs bathroom. The first thing we needed to do was get some in-floor tubes ran. We did make it through, but wholly frustrating. We also got the opportunity to use some beautiful marble that we found at, a, at an old church that was well over 100 years old. We got this marble for less than $400 and it makes the downstairs bathroom just look the part. It's so beautiful and it was a lot of fun to work with.
The next task at hand was using some salvaged oak flooring that was really narrow. I think it was two inches. And we planed it all, took the nails out of it, you know, the whole shebang, and put it up on the ceiling. And we had full intentions of painting this, but we just loved the look of it so much we decided to leave it. And, and it still looks like this today. After the ceiling was done, I decided to yet again use some old lumber that we found during the demo to make some amazing custom built-in bookshelves for both Lily and Jace. Now, when it came to getting closer and closer to being able to finish the house, I needed to have a place to put my tools to make the molding, and the best place was the basement. But before I could just put my table saws in there, I needed to get a flat concrete floor. But before I could do that, I had to do some drainage. I <laughs> and, and I said, hey, you know, why not? Let's, uh, let's put in some in-floor heat while we're at it. In the end, it was multiple months worth of work, but now we have a really nice floor down in the basement and I love that it's heated. It's the perfect wood shop for me now. Once the basement floor was complete, I was able to bring my shop tools down there and start working on the window sills where I was using the salvage lumber from the demo. And then after the windowsills were roughly made, I decided to move back upstairs and finish the floor, which was a ton of sanding. And we went with Poly X. It's an oil hard wax finish and it's held up really well. Making molding, making trim was definitely way outside of my wheelhouse, but I think I figured it out through a lot of trial and error, and we couldn't be happier with the way it turned out. This point in the renovation is a sad point for Sarah and I. My grandfather passed away after visiting us almost every single weekend. I really wanted him to see the house when it was done. And then not soon after that, Sarah's older brother, Adam, was tragically killed in a car accident. And I guess all I can say is thank you to anybody who reached out with kind words it, it did help us, and we really, we we really do appreciate it.
Putting together the temporary kitchen was a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to doing the real kitchen on the other side of the house. I really cannot wait to start that project this next spring. And for multiple years now, we've had some amazing support, both through YouTube and Patreon. And with the money that we have been saving with Patreon, we were able to buy this built-in. And in honor of anybody that pledged to us through Patreon, we made this laser engraving for the inside of it. And this is where we are now. We are doing some small trim work. We have moved into the house and we're enjoying it. It's It's been a wicked five years, that's all I can say. Um, some of you literally have been watching this full five years and that's just amazing to us. I've said it once, but I'll end this video here. The motivation that I have always received through the comments is what really got me back here every single weekend and made me try my best. Thank you to anybody who's been following along. We're gonna be transitioning this spring to the other side of the house. A lot more work yet to do. I'm sure it'll be probably two more years minimum. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you all next time we turn the camera on.